Hello, everyone. Um, this is Brent Bushy with School Zoned, and today really excited to invite two folks on. We have Chris Reynolds, he's the superintendent of Washington Public Schools, and Deanna Aiken, who I don't remember her formal title, but uh, heads the, the, the program College Consulting. What's your formal title, Deanna? Owner, CEO, president? Creator. There you go. Founder. founder. Yeah, found, I, I, I've been called everything but late to dinner. Whatever you want to call me, you can call me. I don't really care as long as the kids get the information. Sounds good. Pick something. <laughs> so, um, thing, I think most people are aware we've got this thing called the coronavirus going on right now. Um, and... Um, uh, you know, uh, if you're lo watching the video, you can see my wonderful haircut where my you know, things are starting to, to fly here. And um, uh, so I'm a little jealous that um, Chris has had his wife give him a haircut. But um, wanted to talk about some different uh, innovative things that schools are doing during this time of uncertainty. And, and this is something that came up. So, uh, Chris, why don't you tell us about the program that, you, that, that you've been working with Deanna on at, at Washington Schools? Sure, be happy to. So, so first of all, uh, Deanna and the, the Washington schools um, kind of have a long-standing relationship. Her children have gone through here, and uh, her consulting firm has worked with many, many students uh, from our school district and uh, been able to place students at very prestigious uh, colleges and universities and help them with scholarship programs. So when we um, were faced with this COVID-19 situation and school closed, one of my pro first priorities was to make sure that our uh, exiting seniors, as well as our sophomores and juniors who were coming up, were provided information that could help them and guide them in the process of uh, trying to figure out how to select a university, how to go through the process of, of finding scholarships and applying, and more than anything, what, what should they change or what should they continue doing during this time of crisis while they're at home? And, and something, Brent, that I've learned over my career, um, and I know Deanna would agree with me, is this is one area in public education and education just period, I think, that we do a very poor job of, of, of uh, supporting and educating our students and our families on. And even if we were just in, in normal times, um, we see people all the time struggle through this process. I know myself as, a, as an educator, with my own children, I even struggled with the process of, of uh, working and selecting the right college for my, for my student, having them pick the school they wanted to go to. And then more than anything, the ultimate question of how am I going to pay for this? How, how do I do this? Uh, and so, so I know personally that it's very, very difficult to walk through this process. And I can't imagine what it would be like being a senior right now, being accepted at a university and all of a sudden having all these unknowns or being a sophomore and junior who was just beginning to try to figure this out. And then, and then now you've got this uh, new experience thrown in here. And, uh, you know, every, everything from uh, the college board to ACT, everybody's kind of had to make adjustments um, here on the fly, so to speak. And so we, uh, I reached out to Deanna and just said, hey, look, our school counselors did a great job of working with our families and communicating, but it would be great if we could put out a class that kids could go to and watch and then get back with you at a later time and ask questions about, what they heard or what, the, what they gathered from your, from your conversation, your class. And if we could just throw a class together for six weeks that prepared our seniors for how do they step out into that college experience under these current situations. And then for our sophomores and our juniors, what are things they could be doing proactively right now that'll help them stay on top of the game so that they're ready when it comes for the application process, whether that be for a scholarship or to get into the, the university that, that they uh, really want to, to be accepted into. So that's, that's kind of the why behind why we did it. And really, I just called Deanna and I said, hey, look, things are crazy. I know you know how to do this. Would you please put me together a proposal? And she has done that. And we are starting um, and just kind of in the initial weeks of this. So we don't really know what the outcome is going to be, but we certainly know that this is something that will benefit our kids. And we're looking forward to see uh, just exactly how our students will utilize it. Wow. So, you know, I thank God that I don't have a high school senior right now because I can't imagine, you know, the frustration of how the senior year has ended and, you know, what I'd be looking at, um, you know, for the senior going to college next year. That's the decision that, fortunately, I don't have to make. Um, you know, what's the message you're giving to, you know, to the senior? I guess it also helps to so give me the scope, like how many kids are we talking about in this program? And, um, and, and so what's the messaging first, like that you're giving to, to seniors that are, you know, trying to figure out what to do in the fall? 
Well, initially with this specific program, um, I questioned um, a large, you know, a large group of seniors. And after we got over, I don't get a prom. I, you know, I, I'm not getting graduation and all of the things that they're, you know, and justifiably upset about. I said, okay, well, what are your biggest, you know, questions or concerns about college? And one of the biggest things that, I mean, that the kids are worried about first off, and, and to me, this is as big a deal as missing prom and graduation is admitted student weekends for seniors. And that is the kids work all year. They've worked their entire high school career to hopefully get to the college that they want to go to. And they may have two or three choices. And generally, the biggest way that they make, the biggest way, sorry about that, that they um, make their choices are admitted student weekend. And after they have been the ones on the hook to prove to the colleges that, you know, they are the perfect candidate, the shoes on the other foot and the colleges now are lay out the red carpet because they've picked their kids. And it's probably, if you ask most college kids, one of the most memorable things that they get to go through, similar to prom and graduation. And so with that, you know, we discussed, um, um, we did a discussion on, yes, it's unfortunate, you're not going to get an admitted students weekend. But what the colleges have done is done their absolute best job in a short period of time to virtually have I mean, they've done Google Hangouts, they've done videos, they've done everything they possibly can to show the kids the school. So that was one of the questions and we've discussed how they're going about it. I know that a lot, depending on the size of the school, um, many of the deans have gotten on and personally had Zoom calls with these kids, which they wouldn't have gotten if they'd gone to a group um, admitted students day. Um, there's been some, you know, some cool things. Um, I give the colleges a tremendous amount of credit because although they had some framework in place to be teaching these kids virtually, the rate at what they had to scale in order to be able to teach the, in college, the entire college that way and still deal with, you know, their accepted incoming freshmen and now they're going to have to deal with the application process of the new, of the juniors coming up shortly. So there was that. Um, one of the biggest questions that I have fielded in the last three weeks is if we have virtual school this fall, do I have to go? Yeah. And, and, and that is something that is really, really weighing on these kids. They want the whole college experience. That's like, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, after this, you know, will schools be online? I'm like, absolutely not. Not for my you kids. Know, like me, it won't be in my house. <laughs> well, there is that. I mean, between the parents and the kids themselves, there are students that are, that online schooling is the best fit for them. But I would say eight or nine out of 10 much prefer actually being in school. And I mean, obviously you have the social aspect, the one-on-one -on -one learning. I mean, there's, there's so many reasons, but for your incoming freshmen, they really want that experience. And yeah. so we have discussed the fact that there are options like spring start or deferring, depending on the school you're dealing with, and even gap years. Yep. And, and I am... But a gap year is a lot cooler when you can travel around and do stuff, right? Well, and there is that. I mean, that's generally the point of your gap year. And, yeah. But I think a lot, I mean, you have all sorts of things weighing in from... I don't want that to be my first, you know, experience of college to the fear factor. Yeah. And I can tell you honestly, after talking with schools on both coasts, that um, their commitments are lagging. And I think a lot of that has to do with people being afraid that they're not going to have a fall start, a, a true fall start. Mm -hmm. They're going to end up with a virtual fall start. There is, a, there's a number of universities who are working um, with changing up their semesters. And we've got three in this country that actually do the block system. But a lot of universities are looking at instituting that for their fall semester so that if for some reason 
they have to go virtual, say, from September 1 to the middle of October, that if they split their semesters, they could actually onboard these kids in the middle of the fall semester. Okay, that makes sense. But I mean, those, those are, those are the, the uh, typical, I mean, you know, the kids, they're, they're concerned about how they're gonna get signed up for their classes. And then you have the flip side, the financial side. The first thing the parents ask is, well, am I gonna have to pay room and board if we end up going to school virtually? Which the answer to that is no. But you're still um, gonna pay full tuition, right? And that, well, there are some schools that are talking about doing some sort of, you know, scaling of that. But ultimately, yes, they have to run the schools Mm -hmm. and they still have to pay their teachers and I think from and you guys of all people would know this it doesn't matter whether the kids are there or not you still have virtually the same fixed expenses sure yeah unless you're going to tear down your buildings and whatnot which in free exactly yeah so how many how many students total and how many of those are seniors in this program right now well we won't have um an an honest answer to that until probably the end of next week. Okay, okay. So the program here at Washington, we, we, we have about 60 seniors and about 82 or 83, I believe, in the um, junior class. And then we've opened it up for our sophomores too. So we have a potential for a, a approximately around 100 to 150 kids total. Oh, wow. We're kind of approaching it from uh, two different perspectives. Now that's if they choose to participate. Um, which we on our online schooling we've had fairly good participation rates we're in the we're in the 70 percentile uh, range basically with participation in academic classes right now we, that's even with them being told that that their grades aren't going to change so that that speaks well I think for our school district um, and I know that's a great struggle for superintendents across our state but we want to see our kids continue to progress forward so we're hoping they choose to participate we, we've tried to communicate this uh, through social media we sent direct text messages to our parents and to our kids. So, so as we get started in the first couple of weeks, we'll, we'll kind of reevaluate things, but we're really trying to focus in on a, a class for our seniors and then our class for our underclassmen who are really kind of just starting this process or walking through the initial application piece because they, they really have two different focuses. You know, as Deanna was talking about, the seniors are just worried about what's the next thing that I'm going to have to deal with. Uh, as far as moving out and is, is it going to be the experience that I thought it was going to be like most of them have already gotten acceptance letters they, they kind of roughly know where they're going uh, now everything's just been turned upside down and it's the it's the unknowns that they're dealing with but our, our juniors and our sophomores you know they were just turning their eyes to focusing on the attention of, of college applications and the scholarship process and for many of them what we don't want is for them to lose out on a semester worth of experience and a summer worth of experience so that they're behind the, the eight ball, so to speak, when they get to their senior or junior year, because so many application processes occur um, very, very quickly during that time frame, And we don't want them to walk in and, and be behind in that process. So Deanna has done a great job uh, for the juniors and, and even for some of our sophomores. Some of the topics we were going to cover were uh, – Things like the initial explanation of the college application process, where should they be at this time uh, based upon whether they're a sophomore or junior during that application process. Um, state uh, testing when it comes to ACT and SAT, you know, what are the changes? And that's one of the things that I asked Deanna because I know she stays up on this. You know, can you, can you explain to our kids what it's going to look like? Because uh, the rumor mill uh, for our kids, you know, they live off social media and the rumor mill is oh, yeah. I've heard that social media can sometimes be inaccurate. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, slightly, but getting our students to understand that's quite interesting. But with the rumors on ACT testing and what those rules are going to be and how that's going to change, it's just been kind of all over the place uh, as far as what's out there. So getting some truth to our kids about what, where we are in that, and then just talking to them even about college scholarships. You know, we're, we're pretty good. Uh, we like to pride ourselves in athletics here. And so we have a lot of kids who get to participate in that opportunity. And we want them also to know what the rules are. You know, can they talk to coaches right now? Can they not? What's the formal paperwork process? Um, so those are, those are some of the general topics that Deanna had come up with that I agree would be great for our sophomores and our juniors as well. That's great. So talk me through kind of the logistics, like the, you know, through the eyes of a kid. Like what's the, are you holding Zoom meetings with students? Or do they get, you're giving them work. What type of stuff are they are they completing? 
Oh, any... well, oh, go ahead, Chris. You go for it. I'll let you take it. Yeah. Um, that was um, some other things we've done with teachable platforms and uh, and in person, all this other stuff. This was this was a little bit interesting trying to coordinate in order to accomplish what we wanted to, and it wasn't uh, something pre-done that we could just set them into. So what we finally um, decided to do is pre-record um, short lessons on each subject and upload them to YouTube so that they and any of the kids that sign up will automatically get the links for the particular, for whatever, you know, grade or um, whatever they signed up for you know, like for whatever section that they needed. And then like, and I, Chris and I talked about this. I said, that's great. But I said, once they have the information, they're all gonna have different questions. So what about an hour question and answer to go with each one of them? And that was, that was of all the proposals I put forth, that was the one he was the most comfortable with. So um, we posted like, there was a lesson posted this morning and tonight at seven o'clock. There'll be an open Zoom meeting for anyone that's interested to ask questions and anything specific to their own situation or otherwise. Cool. So, oh, so I mean, like, so I guess one of the questions: How do you motivate kids in this? Right? Like, you know, imagine right now they're they're struggling a little bit. So, what, what's the uh, the metaphorical um, size twelve up the backside? That's pretty much why that is that is my motivation. Yeah, yeah, that's how I was raised. So, I mean, what do you do? I mean, give me give me the the pep talk that you're giving kids right now, because I I mean I'm I think we're all struggling, right? Like you know, I want I love my kids, I love my family, I love quality family time. I've had enough. <laughs> so, Amen. yeah. So, Brent, let me talk to it from a from a superintendent's perspective. You know, trying to to get kids to engage in distance learning when they've never really had an experience like this, um, and the teachers haven't either. You know, we we threw our what we're doing the entire program K through 12 together in less than two weeks, um, and and I think we're very blessed to get the amount of participation that we are getting. And, and in our community, um, you know, we're blessed with, with the fact that we have parents who are engaged uh, on a normal basis and who want their kids to succeed and who have the time and the opportunity typically to come to parent conferences and to, to come to the ball games, the activities and the programs, uh, the fine art, arts uh, competitions, et cetera. But, but this is totally different. Mom and dad are, are stressed out. They're having to work it because they're an essential employee and their kids at home by themselves, or mom and dad are at home working, and kind of like you described, everybody's at each other's wits because we're fighting over bandwidth and we're fighting over the, the one device that we have. So we've really stressed our teachers to look at research, and the state of Oklahoma has done a really good job, the State Department has, of putting out research-based documents that, that show roughly the amount of time kids should be engaged in a situation like this. So we've tried to stress to our staff, don't overwhelm kids. Let's focus on reviewing skills that are absolutely critical for moving forward to the next grade level. And where can we add extensions that are gonna benefit our kids? And this program that we're talking about, this college prep program is, is one of those extensions. And, and our whole point was to try to stress to the kids that you can't afford to let a semester go by and a summer go by when you're a junior or a senior and miss out on opportunities to prepare for the next steps in life. Um, and, and the biggest piece as far as motivation for us has been communication. Uh, we have our principals reaching out to the kids every week if they don't see them participating in, in the academic side. And uh, we are trying our best to communicate directly with the kiddo and where we can't get communication with the student, um, that moves forward, then we're going to mom and dad and saying, hey, look, I know there's not a requirement here, but it's what's best for your kid. And we're just asking, is there an obstacle that we could help you with that's preventing you and your family from participating? You know, yesterday I had a great conversation with a mom who's a nurse and dad works um, offsite as well. And uh, she called me and she was, she was crying and or very upset, very emotional. She said, look, I'm just way overwhelmed. She said, this is just too much. And we told her, well, then, then you compartmentalize this and you pick and choose what, what you think is the most appropriate for your kids. 
and let us help you with that. Let's talk first about all, uh, first of all, about how much time you're having your kid work. And let's talk about uh, the, the amount of work you're putting in as a parent after you come home from that 12 hour shift of, as a nurse. I don't want you sitting down and redoing four pages of math. You know, let's, let's, let's work through that. And so we're dealing with people individually uh, on cases like that, but yet we're trying to keep the integrity of education moving forward and the expectation level that we want kids to work. So a little bit, a lot of empathy, a lot of pulling back whenever we see a need to pull back with an individual family, but we're not shying away from, from saying, hey, it's time to, to put your boots on, it's time to, to pull up your straps and, and keep going with life. Life doesn't end just because of circumstances. So we are still expecting our students to do quite a bit. Um, so it's a really a, a firm balancing act. What I'm curious to see is how many kids take up this first opportunity since we're really just starting this class today. But what we're going to do is if we don't get a, a good amount of participation, we're just going to re-engage our parents and our kids one more time and just express to them so much uh, that they can't afford to let an opportunity like this go by. Um, yeah. Many of them have the time, especially the, the older kids, that if they would pour a little bit extra time in every day to a program such as this or once or twice a week, it would really make an impact on them. And, uh, you know, I've been in Washington for two years now. And one, one thing I can say is Deanne's program is separate from Washington schools, but she's, she's a Washington native. Uh, and she's from our community. Uh, it's kind of a scary term to use, but what I mean by that is she, <laughs> she gone through Rain the swamp, I think you're supposed to say right after that, right? Yeah, yeah something like that. What I mean by that is, is she's engaged with the community and, and her program has effectively worked with kids for many years here. And not every kid takes part in it, it's, it's, it's by choice, but the kids who do end up with great successes. Um, and so we just wanted to give the, all of our kids a glimpse of what is out there and at least a glimpse of the process um, of, of getting into college. And if you're in college, what can you look forward to as things change? And Deanna's kind of the expert in this. And I, as a superintendent, I know I don't have time to deal with that. So that's why I went straight to her. That's cool be helpful to hear so how are you going to try and gauge success of this program and then maybe translate that Deanna into sort of your larger work that you do in, in, in college consulting well I'm I'm really hoping that the kids are going to take advantage of it and that they will realize that there is so much more to this process than just filling out an application and that's why we we actually say that what we do is college consulting differently. And the reason being is that college consultants are a fabulous tool. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful asset to have, but if you can afford it. And our main goal has always been to offer a product in a situation where anyone can afford it. And because of our giving partnerships and like that, there is no reason that every kid can't, you know, have these tools available to them. Um, with this particular program, I really want the kids to see that there are so many opportunities out there for them to take advantage of. And this would be your sophomores and your juniors, obviously. And that if they'll just put in a little bit of time and effort, it's amazing how the world can open up for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I now I will say that Oklahoma is doing an excellent job. I've talked to a number of schools and we have at least not shut down our schools. I've talked to a number of people in other states that have said, you know, they just gave up. Mm -hmm. And and I have actually heard that quite a bit. And so the fact that the superintendents and everyone involved with the schools here in Oklahoma are keeping these kids somewhat engaged and going forward is miraculous. And what I've found in some of my other classes is that the kids, um, whether they say so or not, they appreciate, they appreciate the structure and people reaching out. And from my understanding, there's a lot of that going on here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, ultimately what I want these kids to get out of it is that they really do need to engage in this process. And that's really what I'm hoping to impart to them over the next few weeks. Cool. Let's talk broader then than just sort of what you're doing in these next six weeks in Washington. What's sort of your vision of working with schools? What's your, your track record of success working with kids? Um, walk us through that. Well, 
um, my ultimate goal, I guess, working backwards is I would like to see this information in the hands of every single school, every single student in the country. That's, I mean, that's interested. Obviously college is not for every single person. Um, we certainly need trades and I have a whole nother deal on that. But for the kids that are, that want to go to college and don't know where to start, and that seems to be the common question everywhere. I mean, there's so much information. It's so overwhelming that, you know, it's, it's a, a fact. If people get overwhelmed, they just shut down. And it's, it is just so frustrating for me to see kids that have so much to offer and so much potential and see them just give up and walk away because they don't know where to start. And that was probably the biggest reason that we initiated this to begin with years ago. So um, my ultimate goal is to see it in front of every single kid in the whole country. Cool. In terms of like, what's the type of programs and, and partnerships you'd like to work with schools? Like specifically, how would you like to engage and what would be the, the outcome schools could you think could see in partnering with, with the college consulting program? Well, we have the program that we've been running for the last several years now is, you know, and it was, I had done college consulting on an individual basis and I've coached kids for over 30 years now. And basically um, several years ago, I had a kid come to me and say, can you help me? And I said, absolutely. And then he says, well, can you help all my friends? And I said, well, that's a little bit different. And to make a very long story short, he had had some major trauma and I didn't feel like I could say no to him. And all these kids were very genuine. And I said, well, if I'm going to do two or three or four of you, I may as well do all of you. So tell your friends and we'll pick one time and we'll start. And that's how the inception of this, you know, started. And what I realized immediately was that there was a lot bigger need for this information than I realized. And, you know, most kids, like I said before, you know, college consulting is a phenomenal resource, but very few people can afford it. And so that was our goal was to create a program that was affordable for every single kid who wanted it. That then translated into larger and larger and larger groups and from physical to virtual to seeing that you know, and, and I mean, you learn and if, if you're, if you stop learning, then you stop growing. And I mean, we have learned every day of every week of every month of every year since this started. And what I realized was that it isn't just about getting into school. It isn't just about paying for it. It doesn't matter if you get in and you can pay for it. If you're not prepared to be successful once you get there. And so ultimately this turned into um, a three-part program and it walks these kids step-by-step step through the college process, the financial aid and scholarship process, and then what to expect and how to succeed once they get to school. Okay. And ultimately it, it is a class that they could offer in school. I mean, what I would love to see my dream is to see this in every single classroom and for them in the way it's broken down into lessons, they could teach it. It would go for an entire school year. So does your curriculum then run kind of in parallel? So you get the, let me sure I get the three tracks, right? You've got sort of the college admissions process. Mm -hmm. You've got, you've got, well, is that, is that applications and scholarships? Is that together? No. It, okay. And that's, there's, there is a misnomer and people always say, Oh, I want to know about scholarships. Yep. Well, if you want to be successful at scholarships, you need to be successful through the first part of the process, which is the colleges, because a large portion of the available financing comes from colleges. Okay. And there's, I mean, we don't have enough time here to go through all of it, but there, there is a method to the madness. And if the kids are willing to follow the process and the framework, um, we have had huge success with it. I mean, millions and millions and millions of dollars in financial support for them. Um, we've had excellent, you know, excellent results as far as the kids 
getting into their dream schools. And for every kid, that's different. I mean, that was, if there was one thing that I have learned or one lesson that I learned the hard way was that not every kid needs to go to Princeton. Not every kid wants to go to Stanford. And that me, it, and that I did not need to push them in that direction. And about seven or eight years ago, I had a kid that brought that home to me in no uncertain terms. So I mean, like learning, you learn. So for every kid, there is a perfect fit school. And our goal is to get them to the place that they're going to be the happiest and be the most successful. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, well, I don't envy folks that have to figure this out right now. Uh, the, the whole fear piece of, you know, sending your kid away to college and what goes on. Cause you can tell your kids to social distance, but I can assure you 18 year old Brent Bushy wouldn't have, uh, would not have listened. So, um, 43 year old Brent Bushy struggling with it. <laughs> so, um, uh, all right. Well, what else am I forgetting to ask you? That's one thing I always try and ask. What, what are the other things that we should be talking about here? I don't know. I mean, I get, well, one thing I haven't asked is, is if, if schools are listening going, wow, I'd like to learn more. How can they learn more? It's the best way. Um, we have, uh, well, currently we are in the midst of uh, restructuring our website. So there is a website there. Uh, it will be far more interactive and better in about 10 days when they finish it. Okay. Uh, but we have, um, they can go to www.theprogramcollegeconsulting.com if they want some information on the courses that we actually have that are available. They can go to www.conqueringthecollegeprocess.com or people are free to email me. Um, Call me, text me, whatever they want to do. Um, okay. I'm always anything that I can do to help the kids. Um, I'm generally up for. And as far as uh, you know, it, and if they're curious, I guess they can reach out to Chris. He puts up with me on a regular basis. Cool. Well, we'll make sure I'll get those links and, and put them in our show notes here, so um, they'll be available there on the social media or in, you know wherever you're you're listening or watching to this, this broadcast. We'll make sure that that's there. Um, Chris, anything to add? No, I, I guess if, if anything that I could add is just from watching um, Dan work with kids over the last two years. Um, the thing that I'm amazed at is the commitment that kids give her once they start the program, you might have a hard time getting them in the door, but once they get there, they, they do see a value. And many of our kids are participating in multiple extracurriculars and, they're just bit very busy in life, but yet they still take time out to go to her classes. And then the results, I mean, for, for, you know, a small school in McLean County, Oklahoma, to be placing kids in prestigious colleges like Princeton and, and many, many private universities all over the country from Colorado to California, um, Oregon, you name it. I mean, it's, it's quite impressive. Uh, so, you know, if we can do it here in Washington, I know anyone can, and it's nice to have a resource. I know you can do it without a college consultant, but, but I've seen uh, just in my time here that, that her, her work is effective and, um, and uh, I wish her well with uh, her endeavors in the future. And, and certainly we're very excited about what we're doing here and hope that it is successful for our kids. Oh, that's great. Well, really, I, I do, go I'm ahead. sorry. No, no, go I, ahead. Say, no, I, I really have to give Chris a lot of credit for encouraging the kids and, uh, you know, being so supportive. And we hope that we're returning that, but, and, and this is something that not a lot of people know, but we have, like, for instance, there's one scholarship that they've awarded 50 scholarships in the state of Oklahoma, the entire state. Uh, Washington High School has received seven or eight of those. So we- It's we, proportional, we, right? Yeah, yeah, we've taken about 20% of those right here. Just, just thought I'd throw that in, a little plug for- our community <laughs> that's fantastic no that's that, that's fantastic and I, I, number one i want to say thanks for taking time out of, of your schedule to to record this time um i also just want to say thanks i know chris you're you're working your tail off there in school and i i've been talking to educators and they're worn out um and and i mean the the, the work that has been placed on your shoulders during this crisis is 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 not fair um it's it's substantial and we really appreciate you 
um, taking that, you know, I mean, making that effort. The one other thing, how you talked about both finding a balance of pushing kids during this time and, you know, and challenging them to, to be their best, but also doing that with empathy. Um, that sounds like real leadership in these times. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we appreciate you and your organization and uh, just the opportunity. It's always nice to talk to you. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Have a good day. All right.